So you watched my previous video on how to get the unique number of words from a file, but now you're probably wondering, well, hey, Zach, how do I take, you know, the code that we use to get the, the unique number of words from one file and get the unique number of words for, you know, multiple different files? And today, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you. What I have are basically original file from the last video. I have another file that just has a bunch of, you know, words in it. And then I took those two and combined them in, you know, all into one. And essentially we're gonna see how I can get the unique number of words for each one of these files. And then if I wanna go one step further, if I was given N number of files, how could I get the unique number of words combined within all those? So I get one set of unique words rather than, you know, hey, this one has these ones, this one has these ones, and this one has this one. How can I get, combine that into one? So we're gonna talk about the day and we're gonna start by using the exact same format that. I used before. And if I rerun this, so if I hit control tilde on my keyboard, this in Visual Studio Code pops up our terminal. terminal. And if I run this, I can say Python, um, how to count the unique number of words from multiple files. And you'll see that, hey, we left off from last time with here's all the words that you got and here's all the unique number of words. We had 21. So how do we go about making reusable code? So let's talk about how you can make some reusable code with this set of code right here. To make reusable code, there's multiple ways that you could do it. Actually, well, there's probably two main ways that you could do it. One is you could just simply copy and paste this and replace certain variable names like you know this path to text with a different file name, like file one or file two up above. Um, you could copy and paste this whole section multiple times until you give you all your things. But in the programming world and just in software development in general, that like if you're copying things and copying and pasting things multiple times, that's considered a big no-no. Um, the reason being is because if you're if you're copying and pasting and changing variable names, oftentimes what ends up happening is you start creating bugs within your code because say you you know change path to text to here, or maybe you rename this path to file, but then you forgot to change this one where it actually gets used used to something else and so now you get a bug or it doesn't run or something like that. So oftentimes when you want to basically make take existing code that you know works and gives you what you want and you want to reuse it, what you'll do is you'll create a function and that's essentially what we're going to do. So I'm going to create a function right here and this is going to say def um, get underscore unique words. And what we're gonna pass into this function, basically ideally with this function, like we had previously, we wanna give it a file path. And then out of that, we wanna get basically what we had down here, which is the unique word count for that file. So I know that I'm gonna pass in a path to the file. Path to file, and that's gonna be a string. And then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna output a list because just like, here we get a list of words, and then from that list of unique words, what we can essentially do is um, get the length of it, and that'll give us our count, right? So what we can do from here is once we have this, all I need to do is take all this piece of code, and let's copy it or cut it, and we'll paste it right in there. So now, if I go ahead and I run this, and we'll change this so that, remember, like I said, if you were copying and pasting thing and you change variable names like I did here, like you need to make sure that you catch those um, because sometimes that can run into an issue. So right there, we have it. We have a uh, definition. Now we just need to return. Um, we have all of our logic, I guess I should say, and now we just need to return our words. And from here, what I can do is I can just say unique, unique words is equal to get unique words and then path to text. So if I run this, essentially what we should see is the exact same output. So this is our original output from the original way that we did this. And now um, when, I, when I run this again, we should see the unique word count is 21. And there you go, there it is, 21. So now how do we go about, and, and now we've essentially set up the way that we can reuse this code. So all I have to do is change the path to the text um, and that will give us, basically we can run through it and get the unique words for each one of those files. So let's do that now. Okay, so if I wanted to run through and get the unique word count out of each one of these, essentially I'll just create um, two more variables, rename this to one and rename this to two, and then give this to file underscore one and make this one file underscore two. And and then what I can do is essentially say, hey, like there's our original one for run again, 21. And then I can go here and pass this one in and hey, that's 18. And then I can say, hey, here's this one, file number two, and that one's 38. But you can see how a manual of a process is that this is. Ideally, what you do is essentially either um, you can pass in through command line arguments, or if you have these variables as is, you, you can basically just create a list. Like naturally, my mind goes to, hey, let's create a list and let's loop through that list and use this function. Um, and so what you could do, and what I'm going to do and show you is basically say, hey, so for, and then file path in, and I'm just gonna create a list right here. And I'm gonna say, hey, let's give our original file first. Let's give the next file. And then let's give the file after that, or the combination of the two. 
and let us indent this in and not forget to change, give it the actual path. Now to make this less confusing, because before we had all these prints up here, I'm actually gonna take all of these out, um, except for the last one. Um, because every time you run a list, we're gonna loop through that and we'll see all of that. And so like, it's just, it'll just get confusing to see what we're seeing. So I'm just gonna come in here and we'll print this out. And remember when you copy and paste, it's like yeah, I mentioned before, if you have unique words or different variables, you need to make sure you change those. So now if we run this, we essentially should get only three outputs of basically our unique words and their counts. So let's run that. And if I expand this, what you'll see is, so this is where we just hit the, the run function. So there's file number one and there's file number two and then there's file number three and there's all of their unique values. And so that's essentially how I would go about combining them. Granted, you can go and essentially, you know, make a function that takes in the user input. I mean, you can make this user input if you wanted to, where it gives you the, like the user gives you the path and then you go get the unique words from that. Um, if you're using with, you know, static or like, you know, the actual path of the file, then I would just like what we did right here. So now we have all of the, essentially the paths to the file and we can get each individual files, unique words and their unique count. But what can we do to get the unique words for the whole, all the files combined basically theoretically into one, right? So let's talk about that right now. Okay, so I can think of basically two ways that you could use to get the combination of, or the unique set of words out of a set, or basically a combination of files. And there's two routes that I think that you could go about doing this. We could modify our get unique words function to basically provide you the string contents of a file rather than the path of the file. And then this will, and then you can do the same stuff here. And then all you'd have to do is essentially make a giant string of all the words, right? And, or you could, the second method would be to go about and use what we currently have, the set that we currently have, get the unique words, and then add those words to a list, turn that list into a set, and then that'll give us everything right there. So to show you that they should equal the same exact thing, I'm actually gonna do both. And what we're first gonna do is we're gonna start off with basically just using what we have. We're gonna use the same function as is, and then we'll do the modification next. So using what we have, what I would do is I would say um, master master unique list or words is equal to an empty list. And what I'm going to do is going to essentially say um, master unique words. There we go. Cap, copy and paste is equal to the combination of that plus unique words. So with lists, what you can do is you can concatenate them, but basically means combine the contents of each into one. Um, and that's what this is doing here. We're taking the original list and we're concatenating it with the unique words that we get to make one full list. And so that way every every loop, essentially what'll happen is we'll update master list from all the unique words that we get. And then what we can do is we can say, for, or no, then we can say the master unique words list or words is equal to the list of the set of that thing. And this will basically just give us a list and make it so they're all unique. And then we can say, we can basically just print, right? And then say master unique words and is this guy right here. So now if we run this, let's reset our terminal and then run our function. We'll see what happens here. And if we come up here, what you should see is we ran through, there's file number one, again, 21. That's our original one, that's our base case. So we know that that one's true. And then there's 18 and then there's 38. And then, but the master list is 38. Why would that be? Well, if you remember, file number two was the combination of the words from file one and file two. Um, and I did this on purpose so we know that we're getting, we should see similar results. And that's because when the combination of these two is in file number three, we know that unique word count is that. And then if I apply our case of basically adding, creating a giant list, we can see that we get down to 38. And I guess what I mean by giant list is if I were to basically run this function, like once we got out and I ran and I just printed that out, right? I have not made this a set yet. Remember, a set will take it and make it so everything in it is unique. There's only one of them. And so right now this could have multiple things and the length of this will just say, so we'll print out all the words and then the length. And if we run this again, we'll reset our terminal so that way we can see this better. And we run, oops, forgot a comma right there. 
There we go. Forgot a comma. So here we go. So now what we'll see is there's file number one. There's file number two, file number three. Now here's all the words combined from all the files. And we see that there's 77 words. And if we were to go add this up, you know, that should equal to 77. And then we take that, make it a set and say, hey, there's 38. Perfect, right? So now that is method number one right there. You've That's one way that you can essentially use is basically use this function that will always take in a file path. And then you can say, hey, just loop through all the files, combine them into one master list. After I get the unique words for each list, combine them into one master list. And then essentially just right there make it a set convert it back to a list so that, you know you can use that if you want if you're if you want to make sure you're using lists and then you can print out the information about it so let's go about converting this to say well what happens if you make the second method of doing this which is essentially um, turning this function and modifying this function a bit to accept a file contents rather than the path all right, so method number two is basically to modify this function, like I mentioned. And um, I'm gonna essentially show you what you would do where I would basically just copy and paste all this. And I'm gonna say def get or get unique words from string and then string contents is equal to, or and that's gonna be, string contents is basically gonna be a string. And like I mentioned before, like we have been doing, this is gonna be a list. Now, all you have to do, oops, copy that. And like I mentioned, we need to be careful with um, what we're doing. So ideally, actually, I'd probably wanna just change this to text, right, like that, and use that. And now that should give us, what I could do is I could say, I could copy all this out and I could say return right here and then text, right? Because ideally that's what it's doing. We're just doing the exact same thing we were doing down here and we're doing it right there in that function, right? The only thing that is different from this function is the fact that it was giving the file pass for us. So if I run this, just to sanity checks, always good to do sanity checks. Um, if I run this, we should get you know 21, 18, 38, 30, and 38 from if we from before with all these all these printouts right down here. So just reset so we can read our terminal. And if I run this again, ran it 21, 18, 38. There's the 77 from everything combined, and then again the master 38 with all of them um, combined into one. Um, so. But we haven't quite hit method number two, like I mentioned, right? So like that's if we that we just modified this to make it give us another function that we, now we have two routes, right? We have a function that can take strings from a text and this function that can take uh, or can take a file path and give us everything that we want, all the unique words. And we now have a function that can give us given a set of text can get all of the unique files. Now those are both helpful. But what happens if let's just go down to let's comment this out right here. Actually, I'm gonna comment that one. So if I come down here and I say file one is equal to, or, yeah, or, how do I wanna do this? Okay, yeah, we'll do file contents is equal to an empty string. And then we're gonna say with, we're basically gonna go back up here, ideally. This right here, but we're gonna do it three times, right? So what I might do is essentially make another for loop where I say for file path, or I can say, this path the file in and I can you reuse the same list that I did up above what we want to do is and now what I'm doing here is essentially I'm saying read in the stream read in the file contents and add it to and we could make sure, well, we'll just leave it like that for now. And then if it doesn't work, we'll come back and fix it. But essentially I'm reading in the file path and then I'm passing in a new line. And the reason I'm doing that is because of a case like this. So the file ends there, but then if I go append right here, this and digital might get combined into one. So just as a precaution, I add a new line at the end of that. So that way we get basically one giant string. And what I'm going to do before anything is I'm gonna say file or print and we're gonna say, here's the file contents, right? Just so, again, sanity checks, right? When we're doing all this. And we'll comment this out for now. And we will go through, reset our terminal, and then go, and then show this, which subscribe to Case Digital. Hey, look, there's this, this one. And then, hey, look, there's subscribe to Case Digital. So there's our three files all combined into one, which is what we want because, like I mentioned, we're just gonna pass. Now, all we can do is just go like this. Uh, get unique this. And in our case, um, we've now combined everything to one. So we're just gonna get out a list and that'll be this guy. So we can actually reuse all this guy, this code now, and just say, hey, master unique words is gonna be that. And instead of text passing, we're gonna do that. And now if we run all of this, 
So what we've done, we're looping through each one of the files, we're opening the file, reading out the string context, putting it into a string variable, and then we're passing it to our unique word for strings method that should get all the unique words um, out of a um, out of out of that string and basically give us a list of all those words. This is probably redundant, um, but it should give us whether we leave this in or not should give us the exact same answer. So if I write rerun this essentially reset and rerun, boom, we end up with 38. So that magic number of 38 that we've been working with, and there we go. That is your second method of how you can go about combining and getting all the unique words out of all files. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, today we've talked about two different ways um, that you can, well, two different ways you can get combined one, three different or N different files into and get the unique words from all of those files, as well as a way to go about and get the unique set of words from a, or basically how to modify our original code to get the unique words for whatever file that you want um, and be, be able to reuse that code. So if you found this helpful, please smash the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing because this is where we learn about Python software development. And until next time, keep on programming.